praise your name. We praise your name. Come on, clap your hands this morning with us. Come on. This morning we're here to lift up the name of the Lord. The name above every other name. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Lord.
Hi, good evening, everyone. Hope you're well. Hope your week has been good. Hope you're ready for the word tonight. Um, before we go into the word, just take a moment to message some people in your groups, etc. Let them know church has begun. They've already missed worship, but let them remind them not to miss the word. Um, take some mo a moment right now to just do that. And um, while you're doing that, we're going to pray and then we're going to get straight into the word. Um, so take a moment to contact um, people in your contacts, send them the link, um, invite them to join us for service right now. Father God, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for every person that is online. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that your presence is here right now. We yield ourselves to you. We yield ourselves to your word, to your Holy Spirit that's moving in, the, in our midst right now. We ask you to touch our minds, touch our hearts, touch our, um, our entire being. Open our hearts, Father God, to receive your word. I pray that we will have ears to hear and a heart to receive in the name of Jesus. I yield myself to you, Holy Spirit of God, to use me tonight. I invite you, Holy Spirit, to take full control of my mind, my spirit, my soul, my body. Speak through me, minister through me, touch your people through the things that I will say tonight. I give you permission to use my body, my tongue, my mind, every part of my being to communicate your word tonight in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father God, that not one of us will remain the same, but under your word, Father God, and under your anointing, I pray that change will come. Um, that we will grow to another level in the name of Jesus. Use me tonight. I pray that out of my belly shall gush forth rivers of living water. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good evening, everyone. I hope you're well. I hope you have your Bibles with you. Don't just, you know, the temptation of being at home is to just sit there and just listen. And you don't have a Bible in front of you. You don't have a notebook. But I want you to just imagine yourself that you are in the building, you are in the service. So get your Bible if you haven't already got it. Run and get your Bible from wherever you've put it. Grab some paper, grab a pen um, so that you can make notes. There's some bullet points that I'll be giving. Um, and there's some things that I will say that you may want to make a note of. So don't just get, don't become lazy because you're at home. Um, get your Bibles, get notebook, get pen and make notes. Um, we are in church right now, whether that church is you're sitting in your living room, dining room or wherever you are. But let's um, switch out that environment and come away from that place of we're so chilled and laid back and it feels like we're watching a movie or something. So let's, this isn't a movie, this is teaching, this is church, this is the word, amen. So tonight I want to talk to you about decisions. Um, every decision that we make is life changing. It impacts not just our lives, but it impacts everyone connected to our lives. And even sometimes people we don't actually even know. Um, our choices, our decisions affects others. That's why we can't be selfish in when we make choices. And we live in a world today that people make choices that just with themselves in mind. And we don't think about the outcome of what that will impact, how that will impact on others, how that will impact on society, how that will impact on the world. And you may think, well, my, I'm pretty insignificant, so how's my decisions going to impact on the world? Well, one um, decision affects another, affects another, affects another, and before we know it, um, we have a major situation going on. So we can't afford to be selfish when making decisions. If we're married, we have to be conscious of all those in our family that we're making decisions. Um, even like, you know, some people make decisions that they want to um, do something irrespective of what the other family members feel or think or whether they approve or not. We have to think about the outcome of that. Every decision weigh up the outcome um, because the outcome may not be something you really had thought about before when you made that decision and how that's going to impact on you later. So we're talking about life-changing decisions. We all make choices in life that um, starts with the basic stuff. When you got up this morning, 
You made a decision what you were going to wear, what you were going to put on. You made a decision whether to have anything to eat or not. And if you did decide to have something to eat, you made a decision on what that was going to be. Um, we make decisions from the moment we open our eyes, our decisions. And it's not like we sit there, think about it, but we're making decisions. Um, some of you made a decision to get washed this morning. Some of you may not have made a decision. We make a decision to clean our teeth, to, to brush our hair, even if you're at home. You make a decision whether you're going to put yourself together and look presentable, etc. We make decisions all the time. Decisions um, that may not seem significant right now, but they are impactful. In fact, we make thousands of decisions every single day. And there are life-changing moments where our destiny is defined um, based on the decisions we make that will set the course of our lives. There are times that we'll make decisions that defines our destiny. And I think marriage is one of those things that defines your destiny. And what I'm seeing today is, you know, people are so desperate. Uh, let's not break it back down a little bit more. Women especially, um, because men, if they want to be married, you know, really there are women out there that are desperate for marriage. Um, so it's not that you can't find somebody. It's because you may not want to if you're a guy. But for a lot of women, they're so desperate for marriage and we don't look and ask the questions. This guy um, that I'm with and I'm seeing alarm bells, I'm seeing um, snippets of his character um, that we're ignoring. And what we have to ask ourselves before we commit to marriage, ladies, is what kind of husband is he going to be to you? Um, those are questions you need to ask yourself. How's he treating you now? Um, because that will determine what kind of husband he's going to be to you. What kind of father will he be? And those are questions that's, uh, that's important because you are making a destiny defining decision when it comes to marriage. And it's so important that we ask the right questions. Don't let your desperation blind you um, from asking questions that may mean that you have to walk away from that relationship because there isn't anything in that guy that's going to make a good husband. Not all men have good characteristics that will make them a good husband. Not all men have the characteristics um, that will make them a good father. And so, it, you know, to save yourself heartbreak and pain later on up the road and being taken off a different direction of your destiny, ask those questions now um, while you can so that you can make a decision to, um, to step away from that individual and choose somebody that's going to take you down a good path. Amen. So the most important decision, one of the most important, if the not, um, this is the most important decision is salvation. Um, every human being will have to make that decision. And that's going to um, define your destiny. Um, because the decision to accept Christ, not just to accept him, but to live for him. Many people pray the salvation prayer and do nothing more with it. And therefore, they never see the full benefits of what it is to surrender to Christ and become a child of God and to grow in him. Um, some people um, pray that prayer, some follow it through. But that, um, that decision to accept Christ, to accept um, the forgiveness that uh, he's provided for our sins. Um, for, like for myself, I can only speak for myself, but that was a defining moment in my life. And because of that decision I made um, on that date, it's changed the course of my destiny. It's defined my destiny. It's defined my family. Um, because of that, my husband, my parents got saved and, I've, and countless others, yourselves included, have been impacted or affected in some way because of that choice I made 40 something years ago. So I want to encourage you that um, make the right decisions. And if you're online tonight and you haven't made that decision or you haven't um, followed through on that prayer that you make, make that decision tonight that you're actually going to follow through on that prayer of salvation that you made. And you're just going to live out your life in the last few days that we have left here on earth, that you're going to live it in such a way that's going to impact everyone that's watching you, that's um, connected to you. I want us to turn, first of all, to the book of Genesis, chapter two. And I want us to look at one of the first examples that we see in the Bible where decisions affected um, uh, 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 two individuals 
and all of humanity to this day. And we know the story, but we're going to read it anyway. Genesis chapter 2 from verse 15. Genesis 2 um, from verse 15 through to 23. Then the Lord God took the man, put him in the Garden of Eden to tend and to keep it. And the Lord commanded the man, Adam, saying, If every tree of the garden, they were living in an orchard, basically, every tree in the orchard you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. So God is saying to Adam, Eve isn't created yet. God is saying to Adam, every tree in this orchard, help yourself. Eat as much of it as you want. There's one particular tree. Don't eat it because in the day that you eat from it, you will die. That would most scare most people. Um, you know, the fact that if I, if I eat this, if someone gave you a fruit, a poisoned apple, and they said you can eat all the other apples in the bowl, but this particular apple, don't eat that one because the day you eat it, you're going to die. We would all avoid the apple, but for some reason, um, this didn't happen. Verse 17, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat from the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. And the Lord God said, it is not good that a man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him out of the ground the lord god formed every beast of the field every bird of the air and brought them to adam and whatever he called them whatever adam called each living creature that was its name um skip down to verse 21 and the lord god caused a deep sleep to fall upon adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place then the rib which the lord god had taken from man he made it into a woman and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, this is now flesh of my flesh. This is now bone of my bone, sorry, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Skip over to chapter three, verse one. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat it, um, eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you'll be like God, knowing both good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of it its fruit and ate. And she also gave to her husband who was with her and he, he also ate. Adam and Eve were placed in the Garden of Eden and the scriptures tells us that they were both naked and unashamed. But on the day that they ate of the tree, of the um, fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, they suddenly realized that they were naked and began to feel shame. This is one of the first things that when sin comes in, they began to feel shame. But what had really changed? Um, what had really changed? Nothing seemingly, um, because they'd eaten the fruit and, hey, I'm still alive. So it seemingly looked like nothing had changed. And sometimes we make decisions and it seemingly looks like, well, there's no harm here. There's nothing's changed. Um, they'd been naked all along after all, but what's changed? Um, what had changed is that suddenly um, they had opened a portal. They'd opened a door um, for the devil to now have access into the world and into humanity through their disobedience to disobey God, um, sin, death and destruction entered into the world. It didn't look like anything. They didn't drop dead. But what happened was they died spiritually. All of a sudden, that decision to take a bite of a fruit seems harmless. And there's so many times we do things that seem harmless. You know, what's a bite of a fruit going to do? How's that going to even impact on anyone? Little did they know it opened a door. And that's one of the things I want to say to you. Everything that we do, we're either opening doors um, to to angelic or to demonic um it can be a sip of alcohol oh it's just a drink it's my birthday oh i've gone out to dinner but that drink 
um, could be an opening that brings something demonic into your life that alters and affects um, the rest of your life. And you end up with a struggle with an addiction that that harmless little drink didn't look like it was going to do that to you. It could be that little puff of smoke that you took or that little drug that someone introduced to you. It seems like, well, you know, yeah, I felt good for a second, but what harm did that do? But hold on a minute. There's a portal that's been opened that's going to bring things into your life that you're not going to be able to control. And that's why it's so important. Every little decision, it, it's not what it started off as, it's what it becomes. Can you say amen? Romans 5.19 tells us, For as by one man's disobedience, Adam, many were made sinners. So we were made sinners, not because we chose to be made sinners, but because Adam, thousands and thousands of years ago, made a decision to disobey God. And because of Adam's disobedience, we've now become sinners, not because of anything we've done, but because of everything that Adam and Eve done. Um, so by the obedience of one, Jesus Christ, shall many be made righteous. So we, here's a decision. Yes, Adam done this. Um, disobedience to God opened the door we all became sinners because of Adam now Jesus Christ has died and paid the price for our sins so that we can close that portal close that door in our lives and so we have a choice right here whether we accept him or not and I'm not talking just a little prayer that you say with your mouth and you do nothing further with it I'm talking about a heart change a heart decision that I'm not just going to pray a salvation prayer but from my heart I want to live for Christ I'm going to live for him I'm going to serve him with all of my heart that's the kind of decision and when we make that decision everything in our lives alter it changes and if you want to know what you would have looked like if you'd um, rejected that you look back on the people that you used to walk with um, the people you used to keep company with you'll see that their lives are pretty much where or if not got worse than when it was when you were with them and you if you when you go for God you see it takes your life on a totally different direction the places I've been the people I've met and um, the things that I've, been, I've experienced as a believer I would never have experienced them and I don't care how smart you think you are you may put it down to your education or your job but let me tell you it's Christ that opens those doors in our lives can you say amen so what our choices are more powerful than we think as you saw Adam and Eve made one choice that made a terrible decision for all of mankind Jesus Christ made a choice to lay down his life for us and because of that we can it can make an incredible difference in our lives but unfortunately, we live in a society today that's really um, bad with choices, bad with decisions. Um, it's pretty an indecisive, double-minded kind of um, society that we live in today. And we see that in the church. I see that I see believers who are like so double-minded and they just don't even see it. Um, they they say they talk faith one minute, but they're totally in unbelief um, back and forward. One minute they, they're happy, one minute they're down, um, just back and forward and double-minded. We live in an indecisive culture. And you know another thing about our culture, we love to blame other people for what's not going right in our lives. We do, we're a culture that doesn't like to take responsibility ability or ownership for our own choices but no one can make you do anything that you don't want to do and if someone's trying to make you do something that you're not comfortable with you need to be big enough and bold enough to say to them I don't want to do that um, because that choice you can follow people um, but at the end of the day you're to blame for where that decision takes you so stop and um, blaming others for what's not working for you stop blaming others for where you are you are where you are based on the choices that you make that is a responsibility take ownership for that decision take ownership for where you are today if you've um if you just not seen any progress in your life that is on you if the, if you're lazy and you don't do anything and you don't see any fruit because lazy and lazy person an idle person you can't expect to see benefits in that because of your laziness so if you're a lazy person you're not going to go nowhere nothing good's going to happen because you do nothing can you say amen 
We need to accept personal responsibility for the choices and the decisions that we make. I like what as Eleanor Roosevelt said. She said, one's philosophy is not best expressed in words. It is expressed in the choices one makes. In the long run, we shape our lives and we shape ourselves based on the choices that we make. The process never ends until we die. And the choices we make are ultimately our responsibility. Let me share an illustration with you, a story um, that may help you with choices. John W. Powell, a one-armed explorer, once named a place in the Colorado River as Separation Rapid. Um, this is where three men separated from the main party and they attempted to walk out the canyon by themselves. What precipitated this separation? There was a major dilemma. There was a major dilemma that required choices being made. I don't know what major dilemmas that you're facing today, but I want to encourage you, don't make major decisions emotionally. When we're emotional, we always make wrong decisions because we're basing our decision making on how we're feeling right now because how I'm feeling is affecting how I'm thinking and how I'm thinking is going to cause me to make wrong decisions. Always calm yourself down always get yourself to a place of neutral and always pray through you pray until you hear from God don't make decisions based on your emotions because you'll always make wrong ones so what precipitated this separation there was a major dilemma that decisions had to be made the Powell party had earlier lost one of their four boats and over half their food to the river the rapids they now faced were more menacing than anything that they had previously encountered. Normally, they carried their huge wooden boats across around such difficulty, but here it was impossible. Two choices were available to the 10 men. Number one, abandon the exploration and walk out into uncharted and hostile territory or number two face the fear and plunge headlong into the rapids trusting themselves to make it i wonder what decision that you would have made so you have this rapids in front of you the water is aggressive um probably a waterfall um, ahead of them and you know especially if you can't swim right and here's the decision either get yourself up out that before you get into that aggression of water and make that journey um, on land but remembering that it's hostile territory doesn't uh, you don't know what you're going to encounter maybe bears some kind of wild animal hostile territory either do that or you face the, um, the rapids which one would you actually choose right now come on tell me what one would you choose to walk it out or to go face the water most people probably would have decided you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna take my chances and walk it out and face a hostile territory um so they so they made a decision um to to um there were th three chose the first option to walk it out um, into uncharted and hostile territory while the seven remaining men chose the latter to everyone's surprise the rapids only had the appearance of a treacherous ride within minutes they cleared separation rapid they were unscathed and with all their provisions they lost nothing they lost no one the three who separated were never heard from again and so sometimes the easy way looks like the best way or the easier way looks like the best way. Um, but when we pray things through and we acknowledge God, the Bible says acknowledge him in all of your ways. I'm not talking about informing him. Acknowledge him means, God, I'm asking you which way to go, which choice to make. That is acknowledgement. There's a difference between acknowledgement and inform informing someone. 
when I'm acknowledging, I'm asking you for help. I'm asking for direction. If I'm informing you, then you're, you're, you're not requesting anything from me. You're just passing on some information. When we meet somebody, ladies, men, when we meet someone, we don't inform God. We acknowledge him. God, I've met this person. I'm attracted to them. I like them. I think they may be the one. However, you know their heart. You know what character they're of. God, I acknowledge you right now. If this is not the right person for me, close that door and cause us to go our separate ways. That is what acknowledgement looks like. When it's you're informing God, you're telling him about the person that you've met and you're proceeding without God's green light. And when we do things like that, we're going to end up never being heard of again, like these three that disappeared. So an important choice we can make daily is to walk by faith and trust God. How do I walk by faith and trust God? It means I'm going to ask God. Ask God. This is a generation we don't ask God. We don't ask for help. We don't ask for advice. We need to get back to the basic and ask God. He knows more than we do. He's more, he has more wisdom. He knows ahead that things that we don't see around the corner. Like these men, they didn't see that, oh, the rapids wasn't as bad. They saw the portion they saw looked bad. But God knew ahead that just ahead, it wasn't as bad as it, it seemed. So we need to learn to acknowledge God. Faith chooses the right way, not the easy way. God, um, and sometimes when God tells you which way to go, it looks like the hard way, but faith, cho faith chooses the right way, not the easy way. Can you say amen? Let faith in God inform and guide you. Let faith in God inform and guide you so that you choose courageously, rightly for the long term. Many of us don't think long term. I want to encourage you, think long term because your decisions are long term decisions. They may be decisions you make right now, but they have long term effect. That's why you'll always hear me say I'm about how intentional I am with my decision making, the decision to train my children um, from before they could even read, um, uh, memorizing scripture, putting the word in them, building, teaching them to have a relationship with God for themselves. I knew that long term that was going to have an outcome and a difference upon their lives. So what I did um, all those years ago was intentional because I was looking long term on my decision making. I could have said, you know, I need some me time. I, I'm tired. Um, I'm a full. I work full time, and I still have to do all of this, and I'm frazzled, and I'm here, there, and everywhere. I put in. I focused on what was most important. I invested. I made sure to invest on what was going to yield me the right fruit. I could have squandered that time on other things and not seen any benefits today, but by investing um, in what was most important on decisions that was going to have a, a long time, long term effect, I made sure I invested in that time. Hebrews 10.38 says, the just shall live by faith. We are the just. If you're born again, the Bible's talking about you. The Bible said we should live by faith. That means I'm not doing my own thing, but I'm seeking God's wisdom. And whatever God tells me to do, I'm stepping out on that. I'm obeying God because disobedience messed up Adam. Obedience is always going to cause me to prosper. Again, 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. Um, especially in the days that we're living in, guys, these are uncertain times. Um, the Bible said we walk by faith and not by sight. This is a time more now than ever that we need to walk by faith and not by sight. Um, we're here, we've been bombarded with images and um, information that's mixed up with lies and untruths. And we have got so much coming at us. We need to know how to walk by faith and not by sight. Because if we're moved by what we see happening in our world today, we're going to get messed up. Um, the, this is a time now to be in your Bible more now than ever before. Deception is high. Deception is high. We need to know the word of God because it will cut through 
all the lies. The word of God is truth and the word of God in you will cut through, will see through the lies that's been perpetrated at us. Amen. Our decision sets us down paths that you can't always come back from. I see people make decisions all the time and they said, well, if it doesn't work out, I'll just, no, it doesn't work like that. Oh, if it doesn't work out, I'll just come back. No, it doesn't ever work like that. And we may make a decision that, oh, I'll trial this. And if it doesn't work out, I'll go back and you find you can't get back because you've gone so far off course that you can't make it back. This is why we should adhere to the advice given in the scripture. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 says, trust in the Lord. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, we all know what that says. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. I love how the message Bible um, translates it. It says, trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Um, listen for God's voice in everything that you do. Stop listening to the world. Stop listening to your flesh. Start listening. Take some time. And you can't listen to listen out for God's voice when you're um, surrounded with noise. How do I listen to God's voice? I need to come away from the noise. I need to switch off the TV. I need to put away the phone. And I need to get myself still and get myself in the in a place that I can hear God clearly, hear that still small voice of God clearly. Shut down the noise, shut down the clamor and the clutter and get alone with God and allow him to speak into your spirit. And the more you do that, the more familiar God's voice will become to you. We need to know God's voice so that when he's calling us, when he's leading and directing us, we can hear that voice clearly. Can you say amen? It says, um, listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. He's the one who will keep you on track. Don't assume that you know it all. Everywhere you go, every decision you make, listen for his voice. Listen for his voice, guys. Our lives took a major turn when we became born again. Um, when we became born again, it was life changing. It was a life changing moment that affected our family and it affected our family for the good. And um, you've heard us share this testimony all the time. You know, we would not be together um, had it not been for God, that decision to come and follow God. Um, it, if we had not made that decision and, you know, without Christ, marriage is hard. It's hard even when you're in Christ. But outside of Christ, when you're trying to do this by yourself, it started off great. Um, two young people that were in love with each other, that wanted to spend um, the rest of our lives together. We used to talk about becoming grandparents. When we were just like 18 years old, we were talking about growing old together. Um, but life happens and struggles come. And sometimes those struggles are so overwhelming and it begins to drive a wedge between you as a couple. And that's where we'd got to. Um, we were grown further and further apart, but God. And that decision on that incredible day, um, making that decision to accept Jesus Christ into our hearts and, um, as our Lord and Savior, alter the course of our destiny, the direction we were going. And when we made that decision, God took us in a totally di different decision, di direction, I should say. And he began to heal our marriage. He began to heal our family. He began to put us back together. He began to bring us back together. And now we're coming up for um, well, this next month, December, we'll have been together for 49 years. Um, so we wouldn't have seen that um, if it had not been for Christ, if we'd not made that decision. And I want to ask you tonight, is there a decision that you're about to make that will alter the course of your life? Um, sometimes we make decisions that we want to move to another country. That's major. That's a major decision. Did you pray about it? Is it your desire or is that what God wants for your life? Because I know there's a lot of things that um, I want to do. I wanted to do. There are different things that you feel like doing. But is God in that? Um, because we can make decisions and being the wrong place, decisions to be in certain places. And if, if we don't acknowledge God in that, we can end up finding ourselves in trouble. Um, I love what Deuteronomy 30 says, verse 19 through to 20 says, I call heaven and earth. And I'm, I'm, sh I'm putting that scripture out to you today um, based on any decisions that you're about to make. I call heaven and earth 
as witness today against you that I have set before you. And this is what I'm setting before you, life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, I encourage you to choose life that both you and your descendants may live. Do you see how the scripture is talking future wise? The choice I make today will determine whether me and my descendants will live. So your choice today, whatever that's going to be, will determine with how it affects you and your descendants, that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, and that you may cling to him. Love God, obey his voice, cling to him. This is what the Bible tells us. Love God, obey his voice, cling to him. For he is your life and the length of your days and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to Abraham Isaac and Jacob to give them the choices we make today church has an impact not just for the moment but impacts usually we see the manifestations up the road it will have an impact on the decisions we make tomorrow they establish a pattern and a foundation for our lives. Our choices we make can be good choices, which leads to our success. Or we can make bad choices that will lead to our demise. I want to encourage you to get closer to God because we, in ourselves, we think we know things, but we can't afford to make choices and decisions because we really, you know, don't know what's around the corner. We don't know what's to come, but God does. Amen. I want to encourage you to be prepared spiritually to deal with life's pivotal moments. The only way that we can be properly prepared spiritually to make right choices is to be equipped in the word. Uh, many of us are making choices today and we're not equipped in the word. Um, there's a lot of believers today and it's really a concern. I'm seeing more and more believers today. There's, they take no time to put the word of God in. Listen, the word of God isn't just a message um, that we listen to. The word of God, putting the word of God in is you taking the time to sit down with your Bible and put the word of God in. Sit down and study, read your Bible for yourself. Get your re revelation. Let God speak to you in those moments. Um, we're a generation today. We think just listening to a message is putting the word of God in. No, this Bible is yours. You have your Bible so that you can sit down and allow that word to go in. So we need to be equipped in the word. Most believers today, and if you're honest, come on, be honest with me right now. No one else is hearing you. You're in your home. Um, the rest of church can't hear you. But be honest. Are you really equipped in the word? Because if, when you're equipped in the word, the word is, is inside of you. Not just from messages you've heard preach, but you've taken the time to deposit the word. You've deposited God's word and you've got a store of God's word on the inside of you. So you're equipped. So when temptation comes, when um, the opportunity to make choices come, that word that's in you will come straight out. And God's voice will, be, will resonate in your hearing so that you know which way to go. Can you say amen? Many people are so badly equipped with the word. They have so little word. It's no wonder we make wrong decisions. When you have little, a little to no word inside of you, you make wrong decision. There are no words there to guide our decision making. Listen, it's the word of God that guides your decision making. David said it this way in Psalm 119, 11, Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. We need to have the word of God in ourselves to guide us in, in our decision making. If there's no word in you, um, when decisions come, um, there are many times where um, God's spoken to me to do something, but it's a word in me that affirmed that. Um, when I was being pulled um, and challenge in that you can't do that. I, I relied on the word of God that was on the inside of me to make that decision. And it turned out right because I went to the, I drew upon the word of God that was on the inside of me. And there are a lot of people today, there's no word in them. And we think we're walking wise when in fact we're just walking in foolishness and in carnality. There is ultimately one preparation that you and I need above all others. That is our relationship with God 
um, that we need to make sure that our relationship with God is on point. Our grounding in the Word of God, we need to be grounded in the Word of God. Every year we do Bible school, it starts in January. Um, and it's all designed to help you get grounded in the word of God, to get the word of God inside of you. We make time to um, to uh, pay for a holiday. We make time to do things, the things that we want to do, to go places we want to go. But we won't make time to de um, to invest in the word of God in our lives. I want to encourage you for this um, coming um, new year to take time, make that decision that I'm going to invest in myself spiritually because I need to know God's word. I need to know God's voice i need to understand my bible um, properly when we make that investment we'll be grounded in the word of god and our faith in his ability to see us through anything we'll be grounded in those things so how will you respond to pivotal moments that lay ahead in your life how will you respond it, well it will depend on the preparations that you make now it will depend on the preparations you make now. Even with a parable with the ten virgins, um, they they lacked five lacked preparation. Five were prepared. The five that lacked preparation were not uh, uh, ready for that pivotal moment um, that is to come. And that's the same thing in the church. There are those that are making sure we know every day could be the day. Um, we just have to look at what's going on in the world today. And we know that one of the things that the Bible talks about in Ezekiel 38 is the, go the war of the Gog and Magog. We see the players are in place that are part of that Gog and Magog war. We see Iran and Russia are right there. Um, so we know at any moment um, Christ can come through the skies and take us home with him. There are those of you that are still playing church. You're still playing with nonsense. And when I look at the way the world is crazy right now and how hateful that world is, can you imagine when the church is gone and demonic beings are, be are free um, to do what they want because the church is removed. Can you imagine how evil men will become? They're already so evil and hateful and they want to kill people. We live in a hateful world. Who wants to be left behind in that? So make a decision to get yourself prepared. So it will depend on the preparations you make now. Start getting close to God. Start getting into his word. Start becoming um, um, familiar with the word of God. It will also depend on your understanding of God and his relationship with you. Do you actually have a relationship with God? Right there. Do you actually have a relationship with God? Is it a personal one? If you're saying yes, is it personal? Do you know him like that? Because when we say personal, you should know what God likes and what God doesn't like. You should know what grieves him and what makes him happy. If you have a personal relationship, you should know all those things. If you don't know what makes God sad, what makes God unhappy, what makes him happy, then you need to get to building a personal relationship. It will depend on your willingness to step forward in faith and trust God even when it looks impossible. Amen. It will also... Dep depend on where your priorities lay where does your priorities lay is it about getting rich gosh guys listen in a moment all that riches that you've been striving for those of you that are chasing wealth and fame and success all that nonsense um that's not going to mean anything in a little while none of that's going to mean anything in a moment so what you're chasing you're chasing the wind and if you chase the wind you'll catch it Proverbs, I love what Proverbs chapter 2 says. Chap Proverbs 2, 1 to 5 says, My children, listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I say and treasure my commands. Turn your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. Cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Ask for understanding. Ask God for understanding. Ask God for wisdom. Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden gems. Then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord and you will gain knowledge of God. So the scripture really is so clear on how we should do things. It's not complicated, guys. Skip down to verse 9 of the same chapter. Then you will understand what is right, what is just and what is fair. And you will find the right way to go. For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will fill you with joy. 
Wise choices will watch over you and understanding will keep you safe. Isn't this an amazing portion of scripture? Wisdom will save you from evil people, from those whose words are twisted. This is such an amazing, amazing scripture. I pray that you'll meditate this scripture. Get it down inside of you. Meditate. Let this become a memory verse. Get this word on the inside of you. That is so powerful. I pray as you, those of you that do take the time to memorize this and get this word, I pray that God will give you revelation and insight into this scripture. So let me, before I close now, I want to give you three, I want to give you three questions to ask yourself when making decisions. And this is by no means a complete list. There are many questions you can add to that. But I want to give you three questions to ask yourself when you're making decisions, right? Um, well, you can add to it um, things like, am I emotional right now? Um, that's, that's, that one's a freebie. It's not even in there. Um, but that's another question you can ask yourself. Am I being emotional right now? Be am I angry right now? Am I upset right now? Am I offended right now? Because all of those things will cause you to make wrong decisions. So aside from those ones I've just given you, um, my first one here is the choice in agreement with God's word. The decision you're about to make, is it in agreement with God's word? Don't say yes. Look into the scriptures. Is it in agreement? Reading the Bible, meditating on the writings will enable you to know right choices from wrong. An important choice we make in life is who we're going to follow. Joshua came to the place to a place before the people in Joshua 24, 15, where he said, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your forefathers served before, beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. There's many of you that are following people, um, serving people, that are not going the way that God wants you to go. And you need to make a decision today. Um, who, who are you following? Who are you following? Who are, are you actually following? Who's calling the shots in your life? Who's telling you um, meeting here, meeting there? Do this, do that. Who are you following? That's number one. Number two, will my choice become addicting? 2 Corinthians 6.12, Paul says, everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible for me, but I will not be mastered by any or anything. Paul is saying, even though everything is permissible, everything is allowed, not everything is constructive. So not everything that is um, seemingly good is for you. It may just because it may be for your friend doesn't mean it's for you. Just because your friend has um, been called to go here, it doesn't mean it's for you. You have to know for yourself what God's plan and His purpose is is for your life. Stop following people. What is for one person may not be for you. So uh, yes, everything is allowed, but He will not allow Himself to be mastered or to become addicted to anything. Um, so look at that. Is it addictive what you're doing? The phone, is it addictive? Most people say yes. If you're honest, the phones are addictive. Um, smoking is addictive. Alcohol is addictive. Drugs is addictive. The wrong company can be addictive. So is what you're, the choice you're about to make, is that addictive? Number three, will my choice harm anyone else? That's a good question to ask yourself. The choice you're about to make, will it harm anyone else? Our society um, is self-seeking and the prime question self-seekers ask is what's in it for me? It's not to ask what's in it for me. Is The question should be, would it harm anyone else? For those of us who are trying to live our lives according to the example of Jesus Christ, we understand how important it is to think of others and the impact our choices might have on them. How will my decisions affect my family, my relatives, my friends, total strangers? And, uh, you know, as we, I'm getting ready to close, um, I know there was a major decision before me to choose an easy way. Um, I remember, you know, um, going through that a terrible, terrible trial and everything in me wanted to like, you know, walk away. 
um, because Christians can be a cruel bunch of people. They can be um, so evil and vicious and want nothing more than total destruction, kind of like what we're seeing um, in the world today where um, you've got these radicals that want to see um, a whole race of people wiped out and, and killed and destroyed. Um, that's the kind of evil spirit that comes into the heart of people who supposedly call themselves believers. And in the midst of all of that, um, you can imagine the discouragement and um, people that you have served, took care of, prayed over, helped in every single possible way that you could, um, wanted, want your destruction and not your destruction alone, but they want to wipe your whole family of the face of the earth, you know, that can be devastating. And at that moment, everything in me wanted to walk away. Um, I'm being honest, everything in me wanted to walk away and just go find somewhere quiet. I can live out the rest of my days till Jesus comes back. That was what was in my head. Um, but, I, you know, because I, I couldn't just make it that kind of decision. Um, God is so involved in my life. And I remember just praying that through and God knows my heart. God knew what I was going through. And I made a decision to stay. I made a decision to stay put because I realized that my decision, as much as I wanted to run away and get away from all this ugliness, um, my positioning myself and my standing would determine how it was going to affect your lives, my family's life. So I made a decision to put away what I wanted for me and to stay because I knew ultimately if I made a selfish decision, it was going to impact, have an impact on everyone. So I'm here today because I chose to stand in a difficult place. And you may be making a decision today and the place you don't want to be could be the right place you should be. And I want to encourage you today, think about the outcome. How Will this harm anyone? Will my decision that I make today, will it harm anyone? I'm going to close with a scripture that Paul, um, Paul said in Romans chapter 14, verse 12 to 13. You see why you needed your Bible? There's some great scriptures that I've been giving you tonight. So then each of us will give an account of himself to God. Each of us will give an account of himself to God. Therefore, let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in your brother's way. What an incredible, incredible scripture to end on. And as we close on that tonight, I want you to close your eyes where you are. And I just pray that God will just speak into your heart. And I pray that God will touch your heart. That whatever decisions that you are, that's facing you right now, whatever decisions that you may make tomorrow, next month, next week, next year, I pray that God will be the center of every decision you make. I pray that you will take the time to come aside and to get to know God get to know him personally, get to know his word, get to know his voice. I pray that you'll put the word of God deep down on the inside of you so that word can rise up and lead and guide your paths. Father, right now we acknowledge you in all of our ways, all of our decision making. We acknowledge you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Those that are in business, Father God, that are about to make decisions, Father God, in partners, investments, and in even taking on certain contracts. I pray, Father God, that you will be involved in their decision making. And I pray that they will be obedient, that they'll hear your voice and that they will choose the right way. Father God, those that are contemplating, those are in relationships, Father God, and uh, 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 in a place where they um, to marry this individual or to have a relationship with this individual. I pray, Father God, for your wisdom. I pray that you'll direct them to make the right choice because you know the heart of man. You know the desperate wickedness that is in the heart of man. And I pray, Father God, that you'll help each and every one of us to make right choices. We acknowledge you and we make a decision right now that every day, as soon as we open our eyes, we will acknowledge you in our lives. We'll acknowledge your guidance and your leading and we'll pray and ask for you to lead and guide and direct our paths in the name of Jesus, that you'll give us wisdom, that you'll give us knowledge, that you'll give us understanding in all of our ways in Jesus' name. 
Amen. I pray that this word blessed you and I pray that this word will help you to just make right decisions. Life um, is short and um, we can't afford to make foolish decisions and um, don't just be somebody that's pretending to be a Christian get to know God for yourself get to know his word so that you can make right decisions every single day and every single time and that's possible hallelujah um, before we close tonight I want to speak to anyone that is online and you're not born again you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior listen you cannot live another day without putting that relationship with God in place in your life you don't know if tomorrow is promised to you you could not wake up tomorrow or you can be going about your merry way tomorrow and breath is taken from you. None of us has the power to say how long. We are every day one cl step closer to our, e to our, de our, um, our death date, really. That's, that is what it is. We don't know what date that is, but live every day. Make sure that you are prepared for eternity. And one of the most important if not the most important decision that you'll ever make is to make sure that you're um, secure in where you will spend eternity. We may think death is the end of it all. It's not the end of it all. Death is just the end of this life in this world. But we go on to a place called eternity. We are spirit beings. We just live in a body. And when we go on to live in eternity, you live for eternity. Literally, there's no end to it. The, cho the ch state you die in is a state you remain in for all of eternity. If you died without Christ Jesus, without having accepted him as your Lord and your personal savior, you personally asking him to come into your heart and to forgive you of your sins. If you've never done that, there's no purgatory. There's no second chance. That's it. The moment you leave this earth, your right to choose is, is no longer available so while you're alive and while you've got breath in your lungs while you have the power to choose I encourage you to make a right choice right now and choose Jesus Christ because if you died today without knowing him without accepting him as your Lord and Savior you will go to eternal damnation and that is where you'll spend all of eternity and God is not willing the Bible said he's not willing that any should perish but all should come to repentance God didn't create hell for, for us human beings. God created it for the devil and the fallen angels. So he doesn't want you to go there, but the choice, the decision, whether you go there or whether you um, go to heaven to be with him is yours. But if you want to make a right choice today to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want you to pray this prayer out loud with me. Say with me, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I repent of my sins. I acknowledge that I'm a savior, a, sin, a sinner, excuse me. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner and I need a savior. I acknowledge that Jesus Christ died for me, paid the price for my sins. And right now, Lord Jesus, I invite you to come into my heart, to wash me from every sin and every iniquity. Be my Lord, be my savior from this day forward in Jesus name. If you prayed that for the very first time today, I want you to know your name has just been written into the Lamb's Book of Life. It's a book in heaven that everyone that's born again, their names get entered in. If your name's not in that book, you don't get into heaven. And today your name's been entered into that book of life. Don't let this just be a, a prayer that you prayed, but you need to get into a church. You're welcome to join us at V2V Church. We're based in um, Wembley. You're welcome to join us and fellowship with us there. If you live outside of the country or you live um, too far from us we also have an online church you can email us at v2vchurch at aol.co.uk and we'll send you more details on how you can be a member of v2v church online that is um, you can email us at um, v2vchurch at aol.co.uk and uh, make your inquiry that you would like to become a member of v2v church online um, that would be such a blessing to be able to pastor you and to be able to guide you in your Christian journey. Amen. Um, but before we close, we're going to honor God, guys, with our tithe and with our offering. We know what the word says. And God, um, God has put into place the tithe 
Number one, to pre, um, it shows our trust in him, our faith in him. And we also, it shows that we understand biblical principles because when we honor God with our tithes, the, the Bible tells us clearly in, in Malachi 3.10 that God will open for us the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that will not have room enough to receive it. And he will rebuke the devourer for our sake. So when we tithe, there are benefits um, that comes with uh, being a, an obedient tither. And also, um, when we give our offerings, that's our seed that we're sowing. We cannot afford to stop sowing seed in this climate. Um, Isaac sowed in famine when there was a famine in the land. And regardless of what the, it looks like in our land, um, interest rate, rate rises, etc. We need to give more than we ever did because we need to make sure that we continually sow seed so that we continually reap. While other Others may be go, doing without and struggling. We should as Christians, because we do, we're do doers of the word and we've got seed in the ground. It shouldn't affect us. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. As you give, you can go online to our website, www.v2vcommunitychurch.com. Um, right up there in the right hand corner, you'll see a drop down and you can choose um, whether you're giving tithe, you're giving your offerings um, and you can or, or special offering, whatever it is you want to um you're doing tonight um let me pray over you before we close father i thank you for every person online father as they uh, um act in obedience father god we know even our seed our our tithe and our offerings it's determining it's a decision we're making today that we know will affect our destiny our future and as we obey your word father god and we are diligent tithers we're diligent to sow seed father god um i pray father god that in as we walk out these days weeks months father god that you will um, provide for us father god even when there's famine when there's increase in um in interest rates etc in our land we pray that we it will not affect us it will not come near our dwellings in the name of jesus but i pray father god as we are in walking in obedience and being doers of the word that you will provide everything that we need in jesus name we pray Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us tonight. I pray that you have an incredible, incredible week. Spend time with God. Get into his word. Listen for his voice. Amen. Have an amazing e rest of the evening. God bless you.